Hey everyone, Matt here and welcome back to the channel. Uh, so now that I've owned the Model Y for about three days, I figure I would uh, give you a kind of a better kind of in-depth review about it. Uh, I know you probably couldn't hear me too well when I was at the Charlotte uh, Delivery Center, so I figure I'd just go over some of the stuff of the vehicle. Just kind of starting with an exterior walk around. This is the white exterior with white interior with the 20 inch induction wheels and normally comes standard with 19 inch uh, Gemini wheels which it's uh, you're able to actually pop the hubcap off these you cannot these are a solid just black rim and if you have the performance model you can actually it comes with the 21 inch uber turbine wheels this is a dual motor they don't make these uh, st standard range single mo motor variant anymore this has a base price, uh, as this one sits, of $53,990, not including the delivery fee and the, also the additional $1,000 for the white interior and the $2,000 for the Uber turbine wheels. So but overall, just a beautiful car, though. Also, just in case it was too dark. So here is a uh, one of the suitcases I use to travel commercially. It's your standard, uh, it's, a, it's considered a large size carry-on. Uh, suitcase got the wheels on the bottom just kind of want to see whether this fits in the trunk so we definitely know it's going to fit in here so it fits in here just fine definitely have room for uh, plenty more uh, you could definitely fit a stroller or something in there but something that's cool that maybe the, a lot of people don't realize is actually that your this suitcase will fit in here as well that's all we got to do so we got the suitcase in there and we close it perfect fits in there just fine so if you ever need to do like a long uh, a long road trip and need somewhere to put a suitcase you definitely have the uh, the floor storage now as an option I also uh, brought a standard uh, carry-on suitcase that I use uh, when traveling on commercial airliners and just to kind of get a comparison, just to see how well it fits in the uh, the front here. So I've got the front open. See, pretty large front space. Here's the suitcase. Whew, uh, I don't know about that. It's going to be rough. There we go. Like that. Oh. Hold on. There you go. A standard uh, suitcase fits in the front of the Model Y, but uh, that's definitely uh, all you're going to be able to fit in the uh, in the front. So and also, uh, when you do park this thing in the garage, make sure that you back it in and not pull it in forwards. I made that mistake my first day owning it. I tried to uh, open the rear hatch here, and it actually almost hit my garage door. A good thing you can stop that manually, and you can actually adjust where you want the uh, the grot or the hatch to stop. But see, it opens up all the way. Still got plenty of space up here on the on the ceiling. No worries about it hitting anything. And according to Tesla's website, the Model Y's total uh, cargo capacity is 68 cubic feet. Of course, assuming with the uh, second row folded down. So we just hit these buttons here. Comes with two of them. And Boom, folds all three of the seats down, or excuse me, uh, both of the uh, seats down. So this is only the five-seater configuration. I didn't spring the extra $3,000 for the third row seat. I don't really need it, so I didn't feel the need to uh, spend the money. I kind of, I spent it elsewhere. And to close the trunk, all you got to do is just hit the button here. And to bring the seats back up, you, this, these are manual. You can't do, uh, there's no automatic up feature for these. So just really just grab them pretty simply. just uh, goes back up. So uh, there's my sunshade from, actually it's from the Model 3. Apparently they have, they have pretty much the same windshield. So that actually saved me some money. I didn't have to go out and buy a brand new sunshade for the vehicle. So notice the, the beautiful white uh, vegan leather interior, which... Man, I, that's, that, that looks great. Not gonna lie, like, every time I see this, I, I just, I kind of stop and glare for a sec, because it's, it look, just looks great. 
So this being a brand new car, I don't, I'm not worried about the staining just yet, but I've heard horror stories about these black seat belts actually leaving permanent stains on the v white vegan leather interior. Tesla is aware of the problem, but they just don't have a fix yet. So I'm curious uh, what's gonna come out of that, because, so I'd highly recommend uh, ceramic coating your seats right when you get the vehicle. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I actually have some ceramic coat on the way that I bought from Amazon. So as soon as that arrives, I'll uh, get to work on that immediately. Also going, uh, here's for the rear seats here. Don't wanna hit the garage or the car. So this is, here's my driver profile. This is where I sit. I'm six foot three. And so the, these seats aren't adjustable, not in the, the five seater Model Y. If you get the seven seat, there is an option to move this back and forward a little bit and to recline it. But here is my driver profile. Or, so here's the leg room in the Model Y. As so I said, I'm 6'3". I still have plenty of room. Like I said, you can do whatever you want. Like I said, but also no, also no uh, center uh, center bump in here because you know I know normally like gas cars you'll see it there would be a transmission and you'll be this huge bump over the uh, in the center here. But this it's nice and flat because all there is is the battery under here. Got your rear air vents, vents as well with the USB Cs. That's a, a new update as well. And also something here's your fold down with your cup holders. Pretty standard, no really changes to that at all. They just fold back up and they're nice and hidden. All right, finally hopping into the driver's seat here. Uh, one thing I definitely enjoy uh, is just how much higher this is uh, than the Model 3. So it's definitely much easier for me to get in and out of. Uh, I know with the, uh, the Model 3, it kind of felt more like I was climbing down into a sports car. Still not too bad, but I've uh, definitely uh, hit my head a couple of times on the, uh, the 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 panel up there. So yeah, but so close the door and let the AC out. Overall, here's the new refreshed interior. Some things you'll notice. Uh, they said the updated center console. No more uh, piano black. Everything's matte colored now to include the center console as well as your... Uh, door buttons as well no more piano black they also finally uh added a door symbol because uh, i'm not gonna lie how many times i've given people rides in my model 3 and i was like oh how do i open the door how do I open the door and it's just like a, a line but here they finally added the butt uh, like at least a better detail on the button of how to open it you also do have your emergency release handle here uh just be only use it definitely in emergencies because they'll definitely give you a warning because uh the glass comes down as you open the door and if you pull that, uh, there's a possibility you could shatter the glass. So, which speaking of glass, uh, this uh, does come with the double pane glass as well, just on the the driver and the pass uh, front driver and front passenger seats, not in in the rear. I'll kind of give you a better view of that. So I know it might be hard to see, but here's the double pane glass, and then when we open the rear seat. Here's the single pane glass. So you can definitely tell there's a difference. I'm not sure if overall just the, the double pane glass contributes to the car being so quiet or just the, maybe just cause it's bigger and maybe higher off the ground, I'm not sure. But I definitely do notice that the car is a lot quieter having uh, this double pane glass. So yeah, but back to the interior. Uh, a little bit more about the refresh center console. I definitely like these uh, metal inserts here in the center console. It doesn't really do much. It's not heated or cooled or anything, but definitely uh, just adds a little, a little bit of luxury feel to it. And to open your center console, you just slide it back. That's it. Uh, for anyone who had the, the old uh, center console, you remember you had to like flip the lid down and all that or flip the lid up this way and this lid flip down. And if you flip the lid down too hard, the car would uh, literally like tell you like, hey, close it gently. But no worries about that. De uh, lots of room in there. Here's your other center console as well. My registration, my mail key in there, but other than that, nothing else. So you got your standard old school, like I said, cigarette lighter plug and all that for, for charging. Anything you want to use that for. No, it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually two additional USB-Cs right here as well. Which uh, I thought that was a nice touch. 
kind of moving away from standard USB-C to go to a U or standard USB to USB-C. Sorry, I misspoke. Uh, here's your wireless charging pad uh, for two phones. It is uh, like a nice Alcantara. That's a kind of a nice touch with that one. Uh, I like that overall. And so overall, it's really clean. Uh, the presentation looks great. As for the said the for if you get white vegan leather there is no uh, piece of wood here it's just a uh, I still don't know what this is I've been trying to find out what this is made of but I, I, it feels like metal to me I was worried it was just a cheap plastic but it feels like metal but so overall it looks good I was debating on getting it wrapped in carbon fiber but I'm I don't know yet no clue uh, and here's your center screen so I haven't taken off the plastic yet um, I'm waiting for a screen protector to get in so get to stare at that nasty thing for a bit uh so the, oh my my favorite feature of this car what's i can't tell you uh is the the boom box feature that this car has basically what this does is it allows you to play certain songs via the horn or you can play driving sounds as well so uh, my favorite so if you decide uh, so you got your horn sound and all that and while the car is in park, you can actually click replace the horn. So when you click that and then click on the horn, it'll actually make sound. My favorite is La Cucaracha, which I'll give you a demo of that. So we've got the horn. We'll replace that. Press the, the, the horn. Uh, that makes me laugh every time. I was, uh, fun, so funny story, I was uh, in downtown Columbia the other day and somebody uh somebody was in front of me i guess they weren't they didn't the, the light turned green they didn't go so i honked the horn but i totally forgot la cucaracha was uh on standby so the horn honks la cucaracha starts playing and everyone that's walking downtown looks at me and just starts laughing like they, they were loving it it's just a it's a fun feature overall fantastic And this, this car also does come with a heated steering wheel as well. I actually, I used it once just to test it to see if it worked. And within 30 seconds, the steering wheel was hot. Like it was hot to the touch. So those of you that live in really cold Northern climates, like uh, maybe say like Canada or like upstate New York, anywhere in the Northern United States, you're gonna love this because it's awesome. Oops turn that off also comes with your standard uh heated seats on all five seats no cooled seats in the model three or the model y oh, oh sweet just press the all off feature and they all turn off so and something else that's uh another unique feature now uh for recent builds uh model y builds after july of this year is the bioweapon defense mode so I actually had to do some research on, sorry about that, I was gonna turn it on, but it's a little too loud. I actually uh, did some research on what this does. So bioweapon defense mode was actually inspired by hospitals, because hospitals require clean rooms and all that to operate, so for, to prevent germs. And to actually test this out, what they did is they put a Model X in basically a, a big sealed room and they exposed it, uh, basically they filled the room with basically a lethal dose of pollution, of air pollution. They closed the Model X doors and they activated bioweapon defense mode and within minutes the bioweapon defense mode took the air quality in the Model Y, or the Model X, excuse me, from a lethal dose of air pollution all the way to uh, a point where the pollution was almost undetectable in the car, J mainly due to the HEPA filter uh, that is in the in the frunk. So, oh, but overall, that so that's a that's an amazing feature. I've I've never seen another car company do something like that. But overall, I, I think I think it's a cool uh, way to go. Also, you still have your standard uh, off on uh, the dog mode and then uh, camp as well, camping mode. Uh, there is an option they do make a bed for the model y uh third parties do that where you can fold the second row seats down and actually uh, a bed fits in this i'm thinking about buying one to test it out 
but not not sure yet but oh, seems cool especially with the price of rising prices like hotels and all that and if you're traveling cross country you can literally just throw the bed in the back of the model y and you're good to go it's also something i actually just realized so these are no longer clipped in place it's actually just a simple magnet just magnetically uh seals in place uh, overall it's a nice touch so uh, somebody commented on one of my last videos just asking a question. I figure I'd uh, give a follow-up in this video. This is from Luis. He asked, how does autopilot work and what are your thoughts on full self-driving? Said, first of all, thanks for the question, Luis. That's a, that's a great question. So how autopilot works, in a nutshell, it utilizes all the cameras. There's no more radar. Radar is completely gone. And it uses all the cameras uh, on the exterior of the vehicle and basically what it does is it it just it allows the car to stay in the lane which in my opinion the car keeps uh, the center of the lane better than I ever could probably better than any human driver possibly could sure there's errors that like it happens it's a computer it's not perfect yet but it'll it'll keep the lane and it will also keep a certain distance from the vehicle in front of you so say that the car in front of you starts to slow down the vehicle will also slow down to keep that distance, whether it be one car length, two, three, four, five car lengths uh, from the vehicle in front of you. So uh, I've used autopilot for almost three years now. I, I use it on the Model 3 for over 44,000 miles and it's been flawless. If you're one of those that you uh, have long commutes, anything like that, like it's a great option. It just, it, overall increases your SA or situational awareness. You're able to look around a little bit more and kind of see what's going on around you, not having to worry about keeping uh, your speed or anything like that. Because something I've noticed about this car too, this car keeps speed better than anything I've ever seen. I've seen, I've, I've driven cars like, you know, gas cars before with lane keep and uh, assist and all that and speed monitoring where I'll set the cruise control to 60 miles an hour. And as the car starts to go up the hill, I guess the computer in that car is a little slow, so it will slow down to like 55, and then finally the computer realizes like, oh crap, I'm going too slow, and it speeds up finally back to 60. I'll set my car to 60 on the drive to work. It keeps 60 the entire time. You will not see that number flinch at all, as long as there's no cars in front of you, of course. I know Autopilot's kind of gotten a bad rep lately. Uh, there's been a bunch of articles about Tesla's crashing into emergency vehicles, which I don't blame the autopilot for that. I blame the driver, hands down. That is the driver's fault. Just because you have a ve like a very advanced vehicle with autopilot, that does not mean that you can be any less attentive to the road. So for those of you who say, if you have autopilot, just keep an eye on the road. Because for every every crash that's gets announced on the news, like with a Tesla, I hear about it all the time. So there, there's my rant on that one. Uh, so my thoughts on full self-driving. So, uh, so full self-driving, I'm, I'm at a 50-50 right now, Luis. So, you know, the, there's currently the option right now where there's the subscription service where if your car has the appropriate hardware, aka the full self-driving computer, you can pay uh, 200 bucks a month if you don't have enhanced autopilot and you'll get access to all the full self-driving features with the exception of the full self-driving beta, which... Elon did tweet recently that it will be available to everyone here within the next coming few weeks. Hopefully he keeps his word on that one. If he does, I'll spend 200 bucks a month for a couple months, you know, give it a try. I know a lot of the mapping is heavily favored uh, on the West Coast, more like especially like LA, San Francisco. So me being here on the East Coast, I'm very curious how full self-driving will do, especially in downtown Columbia with some pretty odd roads that they have uh, down there. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. But to go more depth into your question, do I think full self-driving subscription for either $200 a month or paying for it outright for $10,000 a month is worth it? As full self-driving sits today, no. I just don't think so. Because of course you can, uh, you can, uh, buy full self-driving up front and it can be added into your loan for your financing or you can uh, buy it afterwards for ten thousand dollars and uh, unless you have ten thousand dollars like just lying about that's a that's a pretty big chunk of change for something that just doesn't do 
as promised yet. I am looking forward to when full self-driving actually does come online. Where these cars currently sit, it's level two on the autonomy scale at a five. So basically when level five autonomy, when this car is certified for full level five, five autonomy, basically you'll just be able to get into the car and go. No steering, like honestly the car wouldn't, technically wouldn't even need a steering wheel anymore. I don't think the world's ready for that. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't be ready if my car didn't come with a steering wheel, that would freak me out. But the whole purpose of full self-driving eventually is to provide you with passive income. And what do I mean by that? So imagine, uh, imagine you're sleeping and you could send your car out to maybe downtown. Let's uh, use Vegas for an example. Say you live in Las Vegas. You could send your car to the strip in Las Vegas and uh, via, you, you could use like Uber, Lyft, or I'm not sure how that would work yet, but you could have the car pick people up and basically take them to their destination and it would make you money while you sleep which that's that's a pretty that's a cool feature that's the the biggest reason right now why tesla won't let you buy back uh buy out your lease for a vehicle because they want those for their robo taxi service because that has the potential you, you could definitely generate probably at least like five figures a year depending on where you are but we're, it's it's just not there yet. I'm not sure when that's going to come online, like the level five autonomy. I don't know. But sorry, that was a long drawn out question, Luis. Hopefully, I answered everything. If I did, just, just leave a comment below. If if you're if you're watching this video, so hopefully you are. I'll I'll leave a comment on my delivery day video. Just kind of, I'll, I'll kind of give a like kind of a recap, but uh, all the video stuff, everything I went over in regards to all pod full self driving is here. But thanks for the uh, question, Luis. Appreciate it. All right, but overall, that's all I've got uh, for my more kind of thorough, in-depth review of the Model Y. Now, if you like the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please uh, subscribe. That definitely helps me out a lot. I'll also include my referral code in the description, which makes you eligible to receive 1,000 free supercharger miles. All right, that's all I got. See ya!